In this video, we're going to be going over an equivalent resistance problem. In a lot of equivalent resistance problems, you can just kind of put things in series and parallel and call it a day. However, when you have a dependent source in your circuit, things aren't so easy. The only way to find the equivalent resistance is to use the definition of resistance, which is that if you apply a voltage, you get a corresponding current, and the ratio between the two is resistance. Alternatively, you could apply a current and measure the voltage, and use that to calculate the resistance as well. But in either case, the only way to find the equivalent resistance is to use circuit analysis. So for this problem, in order to find the resistance seen between A and B, I'm going to connect a voltage source, and I'm going to give it a value of one volt. Now the value that you choose is completely arbitrary, because whatever value of voltage you choose, the value of current that you get is gonna work out such that that ratio is going to remain the same. Now that I've connected my source, we can begin analyzing the circuit. And to do that, I'm going to start off by defining a current for each component. Most importantly, through my voltage source, so that way we can find our input current. And we'll call this current I in. We can keep the current IX in the 50 ohm resistor. And we'll go ahead and label this I1. I'll label this one over here, I2. And we can label this I3. So now that we've defined a current for each component, we can move on to labeling our voltage nodes. Starting off, I'll label my ground node. This node here can be one volt because my voltage source is referenced to ground. I'll call this V1 and I'll call this one over here V2. And between the 10 ohm and the dependent source, we have a node as well. For this one, I can call this negative 13 IX. So now we finish labeling our circuit, all the node voltages are labeled and so are the component currents. Now we can move on to KCL and we can start off doing KCL at V1. So at V1, we have I in is entering that node and I X and I one are pointing away from it. So we'll say is equal to I X plus I one. Now we can do KCL at node V two. At V two, we're going to have I one is equal to I two plus I three. Now we can move on to the equations for our components. And we can start with the 20 ohm resistor on the right. And for that component, we can say that I in is equal to one minus V one divided by 20. Next, we can do the 50 and we can write that I X is equal to V one minus zero divided by 50. Moving on to our next 20 ohm resistor, we have I one is equal to one minus V two divided by 20. Now for our 10 ohm resistor, we have I two is equal to V two minus minus 13 IX divided by 10. And lastly, we have that I3 is equal to V2 minus zero divided by 100. Now at this point, if you're using a calculator that can solve systems of equations, we now have a solvable system. We have the same number of variables as we do equations. So you could punch this in, you could figure out what your IN current is, you could find the ratio of VN divided by IN, and that's going to be the final answer. However, if you don't have access to a calculator or prefer to do this by hand, I'm going to continue on with the problem and solve this system by hand. So to do that, I'm going to start off by taking my KCL at V1 and substituting my Ohm's Law equations into that KCL. So that's going to look like 1 minus V1 divided by 20 is equal to V1 divided by 50 plus V1 divided by 20 minus V2 divided by 20. And this is just the KCL at V1 with our Ohm's Law equations swapped in. Now we can do the same thing for our KCL at V2, and we'll have V1 divided by 20 minus V2 divided by 20 is equal to our I2 plus I3. Now for I2, instead of writing the I2 equation as is, I'm going to swap in this IX definition in. That way I can get rid of the IX variable and we just have V1 again. So that's going to look like V2 divided by 10 plus one over 10 multiplied by 13 V1 divided by 50 plus I3, which is plus V2 divided by 100. So at this point, between these two equations, I now have two variables and two equations, and I can rearrange these two in order to solve my variables. So I'm going to take equation one and rearrange it to solve for V2. To make this a little bit easier, I'm going to multiply everything by 100. That way I can get rid of these fractions. That's going to give me 5 minus 5v1 is equal to 2v1 plus 5v1 minus 5v2. So now we can move v1 over to one side and get rid of those negatives, and we'll be left with 
5v2 is equal to 12v1 minus 5. And this gives us that v2 is equal to 12v1 minus 5 divided by 5. So now let's take that value of v2 and plug it into our equation number 2 over here. So doing that is going to give us v1 divided by 20 minus 1 over 20 multiplied by 12 v1 minus 5 divided by 5 is equal to 1 over 10 multiplied by 12 v1 minus 5 divided by 5 plus 1 over 10 times 13 v1 divided by 50 plus 1 over 100 multiplied by 12 v1 minus 5 divided by 5. So now let's take this whole thing and let's multiply this by 100 so that way we can clean it up a little bit. And what that's going to look like is 5v1 minus 12v1 plus 5 is equal to 24v1 minus 10 plus 13v1 divided by 5 plus 12v1 divided by 5 minus 1. Now let's move all the constants to one side and v1s to the other. And we'll have 5 plus 10 plus 1 is equal to 12v1 plus 24v1 plus 13v1 over 5 plus 12v1 over 5 minus 5v1. And this is going to come out to 16 is equal to 36v1. And that gives us v1 is equal to... 16 over 36, and that is 4 divided by 9. So now we have V1, but we still don't have our input resistance. So now our goal is to find a way to relate V1 to IN. And if we go back up to our initial equations, we have an Ohm's Law equation that does just that. So using this equation, I can plug in my value of V1 and I can find IN. So doing that, we'll get that IN is equal to 1 minus 4 over 9 divided by 20 that's equal to 5 over 9 over 20, and that is equal to 5 over 180. And this is the value that we get for I in. So now, in order to find our input resistance, we said that R in is equal to V in divided by I in, and we set V in to be 1 volt. So now we know that 1 volt divided by I in is equal to our resistance. So plugging in our value of I in, we get that Rn is equal to 180 divided by 5, and that is equal to 36. And 36 ohms is the answer to this problem.